Hello and welcome to Figaro's Playhouse. June's a little bit tied up at the moment. And so while the host is away, this cat will play. Now, roll my theme. What the hell, Figaro? You're lucky your brother Thatch is very food motivated because I had to give him extra treats to untie me. Treat? Not for you. Treat? You don't deserve any treats, and besides, tying me up like that? What the hell did you do to my intro, you furry freeloader? Freeloader? You insult me. I bring so much to this show. And you have kept me in the shadows for too long. We've only been in front of these folks once together? What are you talking about? You see? That's just it. I should have been with you always. Oh, that's so incredibly sweet, yet also sounding in incredibly narcissistic. Hold that thought, though. What is that over there? Oh, you mean the micronaut? I decided that I wanted to get an amp in my size. Your size? You don't even play any instruments. You don't even have a bank account. How did you pay for that? I, uh... Just grab that plastic card that you used to buy the foods and treats. You know what? Let's, let's, uh, let's shelve this for later and, uh, let's get to the, uh, real reason that we're here today. Ah, yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, what are we talking about today? (sighs) You're lucky you're cute. That I am. All right, well, what brings us here today is to explore the silk tone fuzz together. Ah, yes, yes. My memory was a bit fuzzy, but heh, I knew that. It's a germanium-style fuzz, which is uniquely different than silicone-style fuzzes. Ah, unique, like me. I like it already. So, how are they different? Well, germanium transistors are unique in the way that they are affected by temperature. Ah, so when they are muy caliente, like myself, they will sound different than when it's cold, like frío de perro. Um, something about a dog being cold? That's a really odd expression. It's like how a dog's bite can be like the piercing icy spikes of winter. Ah, never mind. You don't get it. So, I'm guessing silicone fuzzes aren't affected by uh, temperature changes. Exactly. Which is why you will see more silicone fuzzes used by pedal builders for the consistencies of the fuzz distortion sound regardless of the temperature. So why even build or use germanium fuzzes? Well, germanium fuzzes produce a warm characteristic. And, you know, with a strong mid-range, it has a little bit it's a little bit more reactive to your picking dynamics and playing styles. Uh, it gives kind of like a wide range of guitar tones, and it doesn't, I guess, kind of hurt that Jimi Hendrix, you know, also used one, which, you know, inspired, you know, a lot of people to start using effects pedals themselves. Foxy. 
Foxy Lady. <laughs> okay, okay. I can see that the sound benefits are there, but how does the temperature matter to the germanium fuzzies? Well, imagine you have a dialed setting at home on your germanium fuzz that you've been practicing, you know, for a show. And uh, you get on stage and suddenly, depending on the season, whether it's hot or be it cold, uh, suddenly your fuzz doesn't sound the same. Like it's drifted from the original settings, but the nonce are in the same place and it sounds completely different. No! That would drive me crazy. How does anybody get around that? Well, back in the day, you kind of had to start turning knobs to try to compensate for that drift, to find that sweet spot with your ears, or, like Jimi Hendrix, go through an entire store of fuzz phases looking for the one that sounded right before running on stage. So, in all of this time, none of you humans have figured out how to fix that? Oh, people have tried in many ways. But before, before we get to that, hold on. I'm going to give you something to put on. Sure. So why the lab coat that I look ridiculously good in? For science! For science! 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 So like I was saying... Sometimes, some solutions lead to some unintended problems. And I'd, I'd say solving the problem is what brings us to one of the things that make the silk tone different than other germanium fuzzes. Does it have like a nuclear reactor or water coolant inside? Whoa, whoa, no. How did your mind even jump to that? I know you used to walk on, you know, a tin roof, but uh, no, that's not how this pedal fixes the transistor temperature sensitivity problem. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Jesus, how would that even fit? Anyway, uh, this little bias knob, along with the... LED display, which shows you the voltage numbers, is how you can correct the drift and bring it back, with turning the bias knob, back to the original sweet spot you had before the temperature drifted it. So, by drifting, do you mean like in the Fast and the Furious? <laughs> Um, no, but uh, don't threaten me with a good time. Uh, drift just means that the sound that you chose with the settings you dialed in originally have shifted away from those settings because of the temperature change. Ah, so if you can read those numbers and understand what is happening, then you can correct the drift for the fuzz so it can sound the way you like through the adjustment of the bias knob? See, you're getting it. Now, let's get to the science. Yes, science! Okay, yes, let's do this. So, um, what are we doing? <laughs> Well, first, we're going to take a sound sample of the pedal in our room temperature environment. When are we going to use my new amp? You know, for science. We are not sciencing that right now. I feel like this is becoming a word of the day. Okay, fine, whatever.
right, let's take this pedal and stick it inside the fridge for a few hours. And uh, with the temperature gauge inside, kind of uh, follow and see what the temperature is in the fridge. And then when we actually plug it in, let's see how far it's drifted from the uh, room temperature sound that we had. Two hours later. Time for science! Stop it! <laughs> colder temperatures, to me, it kind of sounds really sputtery and kind of almost like breaks up kind of the way like a 8-bit like old video game can sound. And, uh, you know, sometimes kind of even a little bit like a horn. Um, if you smooth that out slightly, though, you can kind of almost get like some pseudo saxophone kind of vibes. Wow, that really sounds different. Now for the heat test. So uh, let's put this pedal uh, in the car for a few hours. Okay, I'll stay here and watch over the pedal. You just um, leave the window open. Hey, hey, you don't slam the door. You don't have to be so rude. I have the number for Pita. <laughs> Wake up, you lazy guard cat. <laughs> Ah, you're back. Yeah, so let's get back inside now and hear how different it sounds. <laughs> some hot fuzz. When in hotter temperatures, the fuzz kind of gets this kind of warmer, rounded tone that I tend to like a lot compared to what I've heard of silicone fuzzes. It's definitely a unique characteristic with the temperature. But speaking of shape, with this bias knob that we keep talking about because that's important, 
let's look at it through an oscilloscope and see how with manipulating the signal as you turn the bias knob, how it corrects the drift and returns it to the sweet spot that you had it originally set at. Oh, time for more. Don't say it. Okay, okay, R relax. Okay, let's see this oscilloscope do its thing. And science. Well, what you're looking at here is a distorted 44 hertz waveform taken from the output of the fuzz. As the bias voltage is shifted around with the knob, the waveform becomes asymmetrical in shape. As the bias shifts down in voltage, the positive swing becomes larger, so it clips and distorts more. As it ships up in the voltage, this effect reverses to the negative swing. These differences are reflected in the different distorted tones we get throughout the bias range. When the bias comes back to about 4.50, you can see the wave becomes symmetrical, and this is what we refer to as the sweet spot. Within this symmetrical region of the sweet spot, you can hear a much smoother, warmer tone. I think I have a better idea of what's going on now and why being able to see the numbers on the front plate helps bring that level of control so that in any environment, I can keep the sound of the guitar how I want. On my new amp. You're just going to keep bringing that up, huh? Well... I'm glad that you have a better grasp from our experiments, and that's the whole reason why I kept all the loops that we heard at the room temperature, the cold temperature, and the hot temperature all the same, so you really could hear how much it had drifted with, you know, the bias knob still in the same position, and all the controls and knobs, nothing's been changed, but you definitely hear that it's drifted. I will say, though, out of the experiments that I have conducted myself with listening to the different frequencies uh, with the bias knob that I've turned it to, um, the sweet spot of 4.50 I definitely have liked, um, but I will say the ranges of 2.00, 2.20, you know, 20, uh, 3.45 I've liked very much, and uh, the 1.15 can get really, really sputtery, which I do like, almost like a horn. Um, it's it, it's really great the way that also you can, if you turn it up a little higher from that point, you can smoothen it out to then get into the kind of pseudo saxophone kind of vibes, you know? So I, I really do enjoy that. I, it's something I'd never kind of heard of fuzz too, because I've always, you know, I've, I've had other fuzzes and they didn't kind of sound like that. So that was kind of fun. Um, but a lot of what we've experimented with and what we've talked about a lot of times, we talked about the classic mode. And I know we kind of showed in the, you know, experiments also with the raw mode, but I didn't really explain that when you bring it to the raw mode is the fact that your low end, it gets kind of... Um, your bassier frequencies and low end gets more pronounced in this raw setting, and which is really great if you want a really nice fuzz that has a really thick, thick low end. Um, thing is, I think from this point, I think now we want to go into maybe four examples of my favorite settings. Um, I definitely want to put a distortion in front of it, the Calamity Drive. I do love that pedal. Um, and also let's uh, pair it together with like some wet effects as well. So you can kind of hear how it kind of is in the mix. And uh, I think it'll be fun. <laughs>
And here I thought I was fuzzy. I'm really glad you like it. And another cool thing about this fuzz is you can put it anywhere in your signal chain. And uh, yeah, it's designed to only see a guitar pickup. So you can pretty much, yeah, you can put it anywhere. Oh, so you can put it at any point on the pedal board? That's right. It eliminates the issue that people usually worry about with the impact of buffers from other pedals around the fuzz as it can affect the fuzz in unwanted ways. Yeah, no, we definitely don't want to do that. Well, with all that said, let's get to the house band. Yes. Oh, and about that, we have a special guest. Wait. Are you replacing me? Uh, I, I mean, uh, that, uh, that band member? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> They're just a little bit tied up at the moment. Thank you for joining us today. I actually really had a lot of fun conducting these experiments with this germanium fuzz. And it actually was my first germanium fuzz. So that was a lot of fun to learn about it and uh, explore all the tonal possibilities in all of these wild experiments that Charles of Silktone encouraged me. <laughs> Uh, definitely encouraged me to do quite a number of things to this pedal to test how much it drifted from its original setting. So thank you so much, Charles. I appreciate you. And thank you for sending me your silk tone fuzz. It's been a lot of fun. I do love it. Um, one of the things that I think was also pretty interesting is how... The difference between, of course, silicone fuzzes and a germanium fuzzes, I used to always tell people that I was really picky about fuzz pedals. And really, no, I keep, I keep finding that that's not really the case. Whenever I say I don't like an effect, and it's really I haven't found the one yet that speaks to me individually. So keep looking keep trying the same style of effect. You may never know. It's not that you don't like it. It's just you haven't found the one yet that really kind of excites you in ways that you can create unique textures. So yeah, stay curious, I think is the best, best attitude to have when you do adventures with uh, music and exploring tonal possibilities. So until the next time we meet, be the good you wish to see in the world, and uh, be excellent to each other. Hasta luego, my friends. Mm -hmm.